Okay, good morning everyone. So we're going to have a lecture of D5, antiviral medications. If you have your books with you, you can have it open or your notes with you as I go through the lecture. So antiviral drugs, so medicine for viral diseases, viral infections. So first of all, um, we need to understand that, well, viruses are non-living. They're like chemicals. They're not made up of cells. Okay? Um, they are pathogenic, but they are non-living. Now, I have here side by side with a virus uh, structure of your bacteria, so the bio students should be familiar with this. This is an E. coli. So, uh, bacteria will have its uh, cell wall, cell membrane, and inside there's the DNA. Now, this bacteria can move, this bacteria can grow, this bacteria can excrete, can metabolize. Um, however, here on this side, this is a structure of your virus. As you can see, there's no cell wall, there's no cell membrane. This outer part is made up of proteins. And then this one is made up, inside they have uh, nucleic acid. So they're basically proteins in different shapes here. And then nucleic acids inside. Now, you need to differentiate bacteria from viruses. So bacteria, they can reproduce. They can grow and reproduce. But viruses, again, they're not alive. So they cannot, they cannot grow. They cannot reproduce outside the cell. But inside a host cell, viruses can insert their DNA and then reproduce inside the host cell. So they can only make more copies of themselves once they're inside a, a human cell. Okay, now bacteria, bacteria grow really fast, they feed, they excrete, viruses have none of these metabolism, again, because they're not alive. Now bacteria have organelles, cell walls, cytoplasm, nucleus, again, viruses, nothing, 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 except they do have a protective coating made of proteins, and they have nucleic acids inside. Um, bacteria, when it comes to size, they're much larger. Um, they have more complex DNA. So viruses, they have short uh, sequences of nucleic acid. Um, however, your bacteria, they multiply, they reproduce slower than viruses. So again, viruses cannot reproduce on their own outside the cell. But once they're inside the cell, they can reproduce really fast. They mutate fast and they reproduce really fast. Okay, now um, we did compare bacteria with viruses for you to understand that no amount of antibiotic can cure viral infection. But please take note, so there are viral infections that weaken the immune system because there are some viruses that target white blood cells. They grow in white blood cells and they destroy white blood cells. So what, miss? Well, if viruses have targeted the white blood cells, then it means your body, your body's immune system is weak because the white blood cells are destroyed. Therefore, you can easily get different kinds of infections, bacterial infections. Do you follow me? Because viruses infect white blood cells, and you need white blood cells to target bacteria, then if you don't have enough white blood cells, you don't have enough protection for bacteria. So that's why in viral disease, we also give antibiotics. It's because the viruses target the white blood cells that can render you um, weak against fighting off bacteria. That's why we give antibiotics. Not because we want to kill the virus with the antibiotics, but we want to kill the bacteria that will start growing because there's no white blood cell that will attack these bacteria. Okay? Excuse me. All right. So our antiviral drugs can work in four ways. First, so this is a virus. This is a host cell. So our antiviral drugs can prevent the attachment of this virus with your host cell. So the drug can um, attach itself here. Okay, so that the virus cannot go inside, cannot make contact with the receptor of a, a cell. So we prevent the contact of the virus with your host cell. Or number two, we prevent the 
virus from encoding and expressing its um, genetic material inside the cytoplasm. We prevent it from releasing its genetic material. Okay. Or number three, um, we prevent the virus from making copies of its genome and making proteins. So we, because viruses, once their genome is inside your nucleus, you start making viral DNA and mRNAs. mRNAs you can transcribe to make proteins, viral proteins. So we prevent that. We prevent the virus from hijacking the nucleus and making more proteins for itself. Okay. Number four, we prevent these viral components to be released. So we trap it inside the cell. That way they don't, they can't be released and spread and start infecting other cells. Okay. Um, so let's look at specific groups of drugs, antiviral drugs. So there's three antiviral drugs you need to know. So first, antiviral drugs, amantadine and remantadine. These two drugs are specific for influenza virus, okay, the virus that um, uh, results into common colds or flu. Oh, the light in my room just turned off. Okay, let's watch a video to understand more about this virus, influenza virus. <clears throat> Scientists believe that influenza virus is spread from person to person through exposure to large respiratory droplets, direct contact, or airborne dispersal. Infection takes place mainly in the respiratory tract. Yes. Infection begins with attachment of virus proteins to a receptor on the surface of the host cell. The virus is then taken in the cell by receptor-mediated endocytosis. As the virus enters the cell, the virus is internalized in a membrane-bound capture vesicle that carries the viral core. The vesicle is transported on microtubules inside the cell by host proteins called kinesins. During transport, the membrane of the vesicle fuses with the membrane of the virus and the capsid undergoes uncoating. The viral core, RNA, and proteins are then released into the cytoplasm, where they are guided by host proteins to the nucleus of the host cell. At the nuclear membrane, the viral core uses host protein channels to enter. Inside the nucleus, cell machinery is utilized by the virus to replicate the viral genome and make messenger RNA, mRNA. Some viral mRNA exits the nucleus to exploit cellular ribosomes to direct synthesis of viral proteins. Viral proteins go back to the nucleus to associate with viral RNA. These nucleoproteins again leave the nucleus and use cellular processes to travel to the cell surface. Viral surface proteins are made and processed in the cytoplasm and also travel to the cell surface where they combine with the encapsulated nuclear proteins to form progeny viruses which depart from the cell by budding. The virion now goes on to infect other cells. At present, vaccines to stimulate the production... All right, so that's the life cycle of your influenza virus. It attaches, it injects its genetic material, it encodes, it hijacks your nucleus and then you make more copies of it. Now, amantadine and remantadine, um, you just need to know the concept about these two drugs. The concept is that these two drugs prevent the injection or the, the uncoating of this virus to inject its viral content into your cytoplasm. So, the virus already attached to your host cell, but you prevent it from releasing its genetic material into your cell and coating of itself into your cytoplasm. Um, it has worked in the past, but um, we've recently 
uh, learned that the virus seems to have mutated, influenza virus seems to have mutated, rendering these two drugs um, useless in targeting the prevention of the release of that genetic material of your virus. Okay, uh, another two drugs you need to know is also Tamivir and Zanamivir. Okay, both drugs are also used to treat influenza. Um, it's also used to treat, it has been used to treat the swine flu, H1N1, and also the bird flu, H5N1. Okay, so how exactly does these two drugs um, work? So these two, these two drugs prevent the, this part, it prevents the, the release of viral components out of your cell. Okay, so earlier I said, mentadine or mentadine prevents the release of genetic material into your cytoplasm. Now, so Zamivir and Zanamivir prevents this uh, budding off of your virion, your, vir your virus, the newly made virus. It prevents the release of this. So it traps it here inside so that your virus won't be able to spread and infect other um, host cells, other body cells. All right, a little bit of chemistry that you need to know here is the structure. So they look very similar, okay? And um, they both have a ring structure, okay? And they have chiral carbon. So HLs need to know this. I'm not sure if SLs do, but it's an easy concept. A chiral carbon is basically a carbon attached to four different groups. So this carbon here is a chiral carbon because it's attached to an O. That's one group. It's attached to an H. It's not shown. It's another group. It's attached to this group. And it's attached to this group. So four different groups are your carbon. So you have a chiral carbon here, 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 chiral carbon here, 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 or there's a chiral carbon also here, here. So on the test, maybe IB will ask you to, like, in any of the drug, okay, label a chiral carbon. Um, all right. Okay. So another thing you need to know is that this oseltamivir has an ester group. Well, Zanamivir has a carboxyl group, okay? So identify those parts of your uh, chemical structure of your drug. All right, so we have the third group of our drugs. I think this is the cutest, most wonderful to learn, I think. Acyclovir and Zidovudin, right? Both drugs are used for the treatment of HIV or human immuno deficiency virus. So let's watch a uh, video about this virus first. Oh, internet is slow now. I wonder why. Fast forward to okay here. Please wait. V enter cells. GP120 binds the CD4 glycoprotein. This triggers a conference. Yeah, v enter so cells. Enter GP120 cell? binds the CD4 glycoprotein. This triggers a conformational change that exposes binding sites for a co-receptor, either CCR5 or CXCR4. CCR5 is found on T cells, macrophages, monocytes, and dendritic cells, while CXCR4 is found exclusively. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. I wonder why the internet is slow. 
V enter cells. GP120 binds the CD4 glycoprotein. This triggers a conformational change that exposes binding sites for a co-receptor, either CCR5 or CXCR4. CCR5 is found on T-cells, macrophages, monocytes, and dendritic cells, while CXCR4 is found exclusively on T-cells. Anyway, further conformational changes reveal the fusion peptides of GP41. These fusion peptides are inserted into the host cell membrane, and HIV's viral envelope can now fuse to it. The presence of both the CD4 glycoprotein and its co-receptor are essential for HIV to enter a host cell. Since almost all HIV-1 isolates are successfully transmitted using the CCR5 co-receptor, people with homogeneous mutations in their CCR5 are basically immune to HIV, and even heterozygous progression. That's where it's First transcribed by reverse transcriptase oh, into a double-stranded sorry. piece of DNA. I don't, I don't like that. As the reverse... It's such a waste of our time. But let me just explain it to you. I think this is something I've explained in bio already before. The HIV life cycle. Images. So your virus. Ah, oh, why is the internet so slow? Okay, your virus. Let's use this picture. So your virus um, targets your helper T cells. Okay, you've learned that in bio already. So they they attach to CD4 receptor molecules. So this is a receptor around your um, membrane of this cell. So they attach to that receptor, and after attachment, they they release their viral genome into the cytoplasm. So an HIV has an RNA doesn't have a DNA. So the RNA is released and a reverse transcriptase molecule is also released with it. Now this molecule will reverse transcribe that RNA into a DNA. So from RNA it will transform it into a, a double-stranded DNA molecule. Then this molecule, DNA, viral DNA molecule, will be inserted into your normal DNA and once it's part of your DNA, so your cell doesn't cannot distinguish that it's not it's not its own genome. So the cell will start expressing this viral DNA and make proteins, viral proteins. So these viral proteins will all assemble in this area, and then the same thing as your other viruses is it will bud off the cell and spread to other cells to infect other healthy cells. All right. Now, acyclovir and zidovudine is a drug that can target your HIV's, um, it can target the HIV's um, replication and transcription. So this part. So, Miss, what are you talking about? All right, if you look closely at the structure, let's, let's just look at zidovudine. It seems like it has a sugar, and this is kind of like okay, a nitrogenous part of the molecule. Nitrogenous part and a sugar. If you phosphorylate it, okay, nitrogenous part, sugar, and if you phosphorylate it, this actually becomes a non-standard nucleotide. So it's kind of like a nucleotide. So what, myth? Okay, so what? If this is present inside the nucleus, and the virus starts to... Um, to be transcribed to make proteins, the the cell, the nucleus will use non-standard nucleotides. Okay, are you with me? It will use non-standard nucleotides. Therefore, the product mRNA of your of the viral DNA, the product mRNA will have non-standard nucleotides, meaning this will be non-functional mRNA. If it's a non-functional mRNA, then you cannot make a functional protein. Okay, you cannot make a viral protein because you have a non-functional mRNA. It's because this mRNA used a non-standard nucleotide, zidovudine or acyclovir. Okay, so the, the virus is, is transcribing its DNA 
But then when it's transcribing its DNA, the transcript, the mRNA, contains a non-standard molecule, which means it's not functional, which means it cannot make proteins, right? So, genius. Really good, really good way to target uh, a viral disease. So, acyclovir and zidovudine are used against your HIV. All right. Um, we're almost done here. So, why is... So, miss, we have the drug already. So, why is it still hard to, to eradicate HIV? In fact, it's still an epidemic. There's high... Uh, there's... There's high numbers of cases of HIV, even here in the Philippines. So let's, these are, let's look at the following reasons. Well, first of all, the, the virus we have seen has been mutating. So it's hard to target its viral replication transcription because it has been mutating. So the life cycle that we know of right now for the virus may have changed already. That's why our drugs doesn't seem to work or acyclovir and zidovudine doesn't seem to work. Number two, it infects cells that are responsible for, to, to protect you. So it infects white blood cells. Let's say we have the medicine, but, but we don't know where the viruses are hiding themselves. So we can't really target them all around the body. So those that, that can hide themselves, they can continue um, killing destroying white blood cells which which you need white blood cells you need you need white blood cells to protect you against different kinds of pathogens and infections and it's difficult to eradicate because again it can insert itself inside the DNA inside your DNA and you're like but miss you said we have non-standard nucleotides well we, we can never tell whether it's going to be used by the by the nucleus when it's transcribing its DNA. So it's a hit and miss. We, can, we, we cannot know 100% whether our non-standard um, nucleotides will be incorporated into the viral mRNA. So it's, it's still hard to target and eradicate this disease. And um, you should already know, this is in bio, you can read that the last part of this uh, chapter, that HIV results in AIDS or acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. It just means because your white blood cells are all low, they're all destroyed, you're very weak, um, you can easily get a cough, a fever, an infection, pneumonia. So the things that you can normally fight off, you can't anymore because your white blood cells are being damaged by your HI virus. Okay? So these are these are all the things that you need for D5. Make sure that you remember three groups of medicine: mantidin, romantidin, oseltamivir, and zanamivir, and then your acyclovir and zidovudin. Okay. Thank you. What I want you to do now is to uh, go over your worksheets in your syllabus. This, I think we just finished D1, so go ahead and work on D2, D3. You can skip parts of D4. I'll have to explain that to you again, and then answer D5, all right? I'm here if you have any questions. Thank you.